Most people know the Rolling Stones. They also know the famous Tongue and Lips logo that has become synonymous with the band's name. Search anything Rolling Stones related and you'll see the logo in bright red, black, and white. The infamous image designed by John Pash. So how did the Rolling Stones get their logo? And how has it shaped the band as we know it today? Let's take a look at who's taking credit for the tongue and lips design, why there's some controversy to this story, and how the design shaped the Rolling Stones brand we think of today. The Rolling Stones were always thinking about branding themselves. From the beginning, Andrew Lug Oldham, the Stones' manager at the time, thought about the band's image. At first, he tried getting them to wear suits reminiscent of the Beatles, but Oldham realized a better strategy. Instead of copying what was popular at the time, provide a contrast. He began experimenting with unclean appearances, and eventually the Stones came to embody the long hair, unmatched clothing, and overall unpredictable look they're famous for today. But that was back in 1963, when the band was just beginning. Fast forward to 1971. The Rolling Stones are enjoying a ridiculous amount of success. Sam Cutler is introducing the band on stage as the greatest rock and roll band in the world. The Stones already had a reputation for drug use and what might be called a rebellious disdain for authority. They decided to form their own record label, Rolling Stone Records. With the release of their next album, Sticky Fingers, they wanted to do something different. With Craig Braun's help, they ended up with Andy Warhol's idea to include a zipper on the art cover. Not only did this provide an interactive element to the album, but it also made it even edgier and slightly scandalous. But the Stones wanted a poster design for their 1970 European tour as well. The band ended up contacting the Royal College of Art in London which recommended the young and inexperienced artist John Pash for the job. He was still working on his masters at the school. Pash met with Jagger and eventually came up with a poster design, which Jagger declined. Eventually though, Pash got it right and the Stones used his design as their tour poster. Shortly after, the band's assistant reached out to Pash again to create something similar, a logo or symbol the band could use on programs or notepaper. Jagger eventually met with Pache and told him he wanted something reminiscent of Indian culture, which was trendy at the time. Jagger showed Pache an image of the Hindu deity Kali, and Pache was immediately drawn to the mouth and tongue. In 1971, the Sticky Fingers album came out, with Andy Warhol's zipper and Pache's red lips. The record was a huge success, and the album artwork later became known as the greatest album cover ever made. But of course, there's controversy to this story. According to Craig Braun, the guy commissioned to create the Sticky Fingers album cover, John Pache didn't complete the logo in time for its reveal on the new album in 1971. Braun claims that Pache missed the deadline, even though Pache's design was copywritten in 1970. Braun ended up using a faxed version of the unfinished design, which was fuzzy and incomplete. He had to give the silhouette he could make out to an in-house illustrator, who eventually worked with Braun to create the finished look. Braun says that Pache's version was going to be used on the English album, but eventually the Stones ended up using Braun's design on every album, and it became the version on all of the Rolling Stones merchandise. So Braun claims that his version is the official version. Pache came up with the original concept and execution. Or did he? According to Ernie Cephalou, he did not. Cephalou is a graphic designer famous for working with bands to create great album cover art at the time. He claims that he is the designer of the original Lips and Tongue, which he created in 1971. The problem, though, was that Pache's design was copywritten in 1970. According to Ernie, he was interviewing for a position with Braun's company Sound Packaging when Braun asked him to come up with a design much like the one he created for the Dolls Alive record label. Ernie came up with the new design in less than an hour. Cephalou says the Stones didn't like his version because it was introduced to them by their manager at the time, who Jagger didn't like. Cephalou says the Stones ended up giving the original design he made to Pash, who recreated it. Which story is true? 
Who knows? But the story doesn't end there. In 1969, a year before Pesh had copywritten what he calls the original design, another well-known band by the name of The Beatles published a book called The Beatles Illustrated Lyrics. The illustrations inside were by the artist Alan Aldridge. Inside, one image seems to be very similar to the infamous Tongue and Lips. Controversy aside, the Stones logo has become a cultural icon. The t-shirts, pins, posters, and even inflatables used during the shows have become a branding device beyond anything the band could have hoped for when they first set out looking for a simple logo. The Stones have even reinvented the logo numerous times, all of which allow them to capitalize on new sales. They've become the rock fashion standard. The lips and tongue have become a symbol of defiance, and the band and their fans have come to embrace it. We may never know who created the first tongue and lips, but we will continue to see it on shirts for as long as we continue to hear Gimme Shelter on our radios.